So find ways in your life to prepare, plan, think ahead so that you don't become overwhelmed when it comes to making choices. Because like I said, we make choices all day. The less we have to make, the better. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Vibing Out with Texany. I'm your host, Texany, a.k.a. Mr. World Vibe. And what we have here is a community to give local voices a public platform of shared ideas, knowledge, and perspectives. So today's episode is about choice overload. And I'm so excited to get into this topic. It's something we all experience, trust me. So that's the whole point of Psych Saturdays, is for me to give you you know, psychological phenomenon that we all face as humans, as people. What we're going to do is make that make sense. You're going to learn about it and apply it to your life so that when you go out into your day, out into your lives, you know where this is happening and it'll improve your life just by knowing what this is and how you see it working in your day to day, you know, activities. So before we get into that, just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and listening. If you're on YouTube watching, give this video a like and make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers, so give it a subscribe right now. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, same thing, subscribe so you don't miss another episode and so more people see what we're doing here. So appreciate that. So stay tuned, we're gonna get into this choice overload, AKA the paradox of choice. But before we start, I just wanna let you guys know, I do have an ebook that I recently released, How to Vibe Out an ebook and speaking of choices this is a pretty easy choice this ebook is proven okay to uplift your life i've got so many you know great you know messages encouraging messages feedback and support with my recent release of this book and a lot of y'all have bought it so thank you if you haven't got the ebook yet check it out the link is in the description of this episode and there's a discount code for y'all okay until may 1st just enter 25 support at checkout and save yourself 25%, okay? So let's get into this paradox of choice, choice overload. There's so many ways that people call it. Um, over choice is another. I made a lot of notes because I want this to be the place where you learn about this the best. Psych Saturdays is, the, is unparalleled with the knowledge. You're not going to hear about this in any better situation than right here. So let's get into it. When you experience um, choice overload, you basically have too many choices that you can imagine and it's a negative experience as we're going to get into because the amount of choices you think having more choices would be better no turns out it's actually the opposite in many cases this can result in you know negative experiences where we don't even know how to make a choice anymore or we're dissatisfied with the choices that we make and it's weird because this is a psychological experience as much as it is an economical term You know what I mean? So let's start there. Let's start with retail, consumerism, because as humans in the digital age, in the information era, we are consuming so much, right? And we have so much choice in our lives. I think as humans, as conscious beings, we make so many choices every single day. We make so many choices. So choice overload undoubtedly happens with the retail, consumerism, and buying areas of our lives. So let's start there. Let's look at retail. Let's say you go to the grocery store, right? And you're looking at what type of you know, bread to buy. There's so many types of breads. So if you don't have a plan of which type of bread you want, all those options are gonna be exhausting. You're gonna start comparing all these different types. And that's what you see in things like grocery stores. There's so many different varieties it makes it hard to choose. The same thing happens when you're doing online shopping or shopping in person for, you know, clothes and stuff like that. There's so many options. You might buy something and then, you know, realize later you didn't really want that. So that's kind of what what we see is there's so many options to choose from when we're buying that it becomes overwhelming and we don't feel as satisfied. We don't feel as good with the option that we end up choosing or it's hard to even choose in the first place. So they did studies about this experience all the way back in 2000. 
uh, psychologist Sheena Liangar and Mark Lepper from Columbia and Stanford University. They published a study about jams. Okay, so there's different scenarios. They offered jam samples to people. So what were their results? In the scenario where there were 24 samples of jam, more people were drawn to this scenario, to the jars of jam, but only 3% actually purchased a jar. Whereas in the six jars of jam, that's only, only six to choose from, this had 30% of people actually become customers and buy a jar. So when you look at this, this study, less jars of jam meant more customers. So what, what, can we, what can we take away from that is that less is often more, right? Less, less is sometimes more. Having less options will create more customers in this case. And why does this happen? So there's a, there's a term called analysis paralysis, where you can imagine what this means from just hearing about it. When you have so many options to choose from, naturally you're gonna be comparing all your options, like what this one, this one, this one, this one. All that comparison in your mind creates stress, tension, cognitive dissonance, actually. And so what ends up happening is it makes it hard to even choose a, an option. And then that's why we saw in that study, many people with the 24 jars of jam, they didn't even choose anything at all. In the same paper, there was a study that focused on the satisfaction with choosing less. So they wanted to actually look at, you know, a customer's satisfaction levels with different amounts of choosing. Very similar study, this time they were offering chocolate to people. There were three uh, case scenarios. In one scenario, they offered one out of six types of chocolates to customers. In another, they offered one out of 30 types of chocolate to customers. And in the final scenario, they only offered one type of chocolate. In the scenario with only one type of chocolate, people were the least, they reported the least amount of satisfaction with their choice given. With the option of 30 chocolates to choose from, a few more people were satisfied, but with one out of six chocolates to choose from, so not only, not just one, but not all the way of 30, most people were satisfied with their choice. So that's what we saw in that case is not just having one choice, but having a few, but not too many, creates the highest satisfaction among customers. And often another thing that happens, and you, you've probably experienced this or heard this uh, scenario again, is buyer's remorse, which is when we have instant regret from making a decision and making a purchase, especially when it's a expensive or a high priced item. So let's say you go and buy a TV, but there's so many different types of TVs. You make your choice and then you go home and you're thinking about, oh man, that other one seems so much better. It's also under time pressure that we, that we really find this buyer's remorse. When we feel like we have to choose something under a time restraint, we feel like we make an even worse choice. So there's lots of things to consider in retail that create this paradox of choice, this choice overload. I just want you to consider in your own life, in your own scenarios, how you see this happening. So let's move on to this social entertainment aspect of where we see choice overload again. And let's start with dating because that's one that, you know, I feel like nowadays people have so many different options, again, on, on partners to find. Let's look at dating apps for sure, the rise of dating apps, Tinder, you know, um, Bumble, all these dating apps, right? There's so many options of people to choose from, yet in the US, according to a study, just over 50% of, of US adults are single nowadays. Like that's, compared to back then when most people were, were in relationships and had partners, only 50% of people are in relationships. Half, half of the people are single nowadays, even though we have more choice, right? So isn't that kind of interesting? And again, analysis paralysis happens because we have so many different choices when it comes to dating. We often don't know which one is the best, which person is the best for us because there's so many different people to choose from. In terms of entertainment, we can also look at Netflix. How about that for an example? You're choosing something to watch. Let's say you have a partner, you have someone to sit down and watch with. Now you gotta choose a show to watch. You go on Netflix and there's just so many choices. You're just scrolling, thinking, oh, what should we watch? There's action, there's crime, there's comedy, documentaries. There are so many options on there. You could spend so long choosing something to watch. By the time you choose something, you're thinking about all the other options that you could have chose. So you have that buyer's remorse. This might be a stretch, but I also feel like social media, the amount of uh, content we consume on social media, the more we watch, the more we consume. People often say the more time you spend online, the you know less satisfied you are, the less happy you feel. 
And I think that comes into play with choice overload as well because you know, you spend all day on your phone or on the computer just looking, just looking, you're just consuming so much that every piece of content you consume, it's just, there's so many choices of things to watch. Eventually, you're not satisfied with what you're looking at. You're just passing time, killing time. And let's finish off with lifestyle because I think that's where I'm the most compelled to talk about. Uh, it's where I've found the most relatable areas of choice overload where I've kind of I don't know related to this topic so let's go into it so imagine you wake up and you don't know what to do with the day so many things you can do let's say you're done your exams let's say you don't have a job right now you're just at home chilling there's so much to do and I think choice overload will come in this case too because you can do anything you want and so you're like let me just do nothing because there's so much I can do or you open the fridge and you want to make something to eat you just see a bunch of ingredients. You see no meals you can make because you just see ingredients. Again, you're you're having choice overload because you can't really choose what you want. There's so many options. And so I think, you know, we have to look at our lifestyle. We have to look at the things we do day to day and figure out how to cut down on choice overload. So now that we know all the areas that we see it, let's think about some ways to tackle choice overload because we're here to put our ideas into into action, find ways, find solutions with this you know, negative experience that we all face, right? So let's look at the first thing, retail. That was where we started. How do companies overcome choice overload? I mean, obviously they're smart, they're tactical. How do they work their way around this? So where do we start? We started with grocery stores. They have areas of the store where they have specific things for you to buy. They have all the areas on the outside of the aisles, they have very limited choices that they want you to go for. The things that are marked up, the things they want you to buy. Same thing when you go to restaurants. Even though there's so many choices on the menu, they have their eight combos, the go-to combos. Again, these are marked up products and, and, and meals, but they're easier to choose from because they're organized in a certain way where you're choosing from a smaller amount in a bigger amount. So what you can do is you can categorize your list of options into less options, you know, as long as they're categorized properly. And I find that if you ever go to like a really nice restaurant, who remembers when we used to go to restaurants, right? <laughs> when you go to a nice restaurant, they often have not a lot of things to choose from. They have less things on the menu and you're more satisfied with what you chose because there were less things to choose from. So I see this choice overload working in real life and it's it's just true. So if you're selling products, don't sell too many at once. Make sure you categorize them, highlight your top offers. So you can also compare products. You can also have features on your websites and stuff that help people compare products one, just one by one, instead of having to compare everything with each other and getting this analysis paralysis, you can have a button or an action to only compare two items. That's again what people do. It's another strategy. So let's shift from retail selling products to entertainment, social. And the first thing I talked about was dating apps, right? How do we reduce the choice overload there? The simplest thing to do is to not go on these dating apps. Don't use them as much. Don't rely on them as much. I know it's easier said than done, all right, but it's that's the most blunt way I can put it is don't use them as much because all those choices, you're going to be less satisfied with the people that you choose. You're going to be comparing all these people to each other and it's just not going to create the best situation. I mean, think about these apps. We, You know as good as I do, apps, companies, they want to keep you back, coming back to that app. So even though they want you to find a partner, realistically, they want you to have a good experience on the app. And if you come back to the app, that's only going to benefit them, right? So the best idea is to reduce your time on the social media apps, on the dating apps. And yeah, in social media, same thing. Reduce your time on social media. If you're on Netflix trying to choose a movie, before you choose a movie, think about a genre you already want to watch. Like, you know what I mean? Make these decisions before you go there. And lastly, Let's figure out how to reduce choice overload, paradox of choice with our lifestyle. That's something I'm proud to say I'm pretty good at because I spend 12 hours a day working on my podcast. I have to be very productive with what I do. So I've learned a lot about reducing choice overload and I'm excited to kind of share these ideas with you here. 
So you wake up in the morning, you don't know what to do, you can do anything. So make a to-do list, make a schedule. If you have 10 things to do all day, then you, you, you won't be bored because you'll have something to do all the time. So you won't be overloaded with all these different things you can do. It's that simple. Make a schedule, a to-do list. When you wake up, you don't have to pick out your clothes if you know what you're going to wear from the night before. Or if you wear the same thing every day. I know Steve Jobs used to do that. A few friends of mine talked about that before. And I often wear the same things every day. I'm not really going places. So I have like a common outfit that I go to, common few outfits, things like this. Um, when it comes to making food, when I open the fridge, I already know what I'm eating because I eat the same things all the time. I don't have to think and spend all this mental energy choosing because I know what I'm going to eat. I plan out my food. I use the MyFitnessPal app and track my calories. So I have a diet plan already working. I already have the game plan of what I need to eat, what I want to wear, what I want to do. I don't have to make as many choices. So I'm not overloaded with these choices. So find ways in your life to prepare, plan, think ahead so that you don't become overwhelmed when it comes to making choices. Because like I said, we make choices all day. The less we have to make, the better. That's how we're going to reduce the negative feeling of choice overload. So I hope this episode helped. I hope you've you know, learned about choice overload. I mean, obviously you have. I hope you've made connections with how you see it in your everyday life. And you've started to kind of think about ways to deal with it, to work through it, and to reduce this feeling so that you can live your days you know, more peacefully, with more positivity, and more productivity because that's something that we all could use nowadays. Again, if you're looking for more productivity, more positivity, more peace, read my book, How to Vibe Out an Ebook. You know it's out now. Links in the description right now. And yeah, I have a really cool episode coming next week. So just stay tuned for that. I thank you so much for being here today. And yeah, until next episode, this has been Vibing Out with Texany. I'm your host, Texany, a.k.a. Mr. World Vibe. And I'm signing out. Peace. Yo, what's going on, dude? Not much, yo. Actually, I heard about this common experience called choice overload. Let me tell you about it. Hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out what kind of bread to buy later. Why are there so many different types of bread? Yeah, that's choice. And I can't decide which girl to message on Tinder. Like, there's so many options on these dating apps, man. Bro, that's what I'm trying to talk about. It's and I'm supposed to watch a movie with my friends on Netflix later, but I can't decide which movie. There's so many to choose from. Bruh. Oh, were you, were you saying something? Yes, you're experiencing choice overload. It's an experience where when we have so many decisions to make, it's hard to make a choice at all. <laughs> you think? Yep, I'm sure. That's cool and all, but I still have to go. I'm sorry.